Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you had a great week in your FPL team last week. We're gonna get straight into my sort of game week 10 review, game week 11 review. Let's get straight into it. Here is my side. Let's see how it's performed. Very, very big week for us. You can probably tell by the rank what type of week we had. 916K rank for the world was fantastic. 83 total points. Plenty of green arrows, but the big one is we get ourselves up to 155,000 in the world with a nice big green arrow for us today. So 83 points on the week. Areola with a three, Cash five, Simicast six, and it was 83 with only 10 players as well because Kieran Trippier manages, everyone probably knows, Two goals conceded and a yellow card means zero points. But where we won the week was sort of through our midfield and our forward line. Again, Gordon, the Wolves game was an interesting one. I think they needed a break. I know they've played midweek again. And Gordon played some, you know, 64 minutes this morning against uh, Manchester United. But I'm hoping a little break there for him has gone all right. Bowen this morning scored and started up front for West Ham. So I'm very, very excited to see if he can remain in that you know position up front. Then we've got Sun with a 10-pointer, got the goal, three bonus against Crystal Palace, borderline essential. Salah captain gets a return against Nottingham Forest and a clean sheet. Would have liked that to have been a little bit more, but we take it and we run. But Moussa Diaby, the faith has paid off. He's got the goal, he's got the assist and a three bonus, and he's only about 10%, or he was about 10% owned, 11% owned last week. He's gone up because... Aston Villa still have some very, very favorable fixtures. And then we have the Haaland 16-pointer. I just can't get my captaincy right. I've gone Haaland for two weeks in a row when Salah was the better captain. Then I've gone Salah and then Haaland was the better captain. So I could have been well inside, you know, the top 70 to 60K if I'd got the captaincy stuff right. But I feel like I've played the fixtures the best I can. And Darwin gets a start against Nottingham Forest, gets the goal, gets an assist, gets a goal again this morning off the bench when Liverpool need him. Look at these fixtures Liverpool have. We get Luton, Brentford, Man City, which is coming off of the international break, which it's thought that he could potentially get a rest against Man City anyway. And I'll probably see Gakpo starting that game, so I might have to hold Darwin. And then we get him for Fulham, Sheffield United, Crystal Palace, Man United before Arsenal, Burnley. You know, very, very good fixture run. Darwin's going to play many, many games, and he is starting to show his qualities as a finisher as well. So I'm excited to have Darwin. Gabriel ended up being my transfer in. I did go from Cabore to Gabriel. My thought process was right. I did start him uh, over Gordon. Again, I know he got rested. He, got, he played this morning. He's got Newcastle away. We'll talk about that in a minute, but... Would have been nice to get a six-pointer out of him over Gordon. So it would have got us, obviously, a net four points overall. We would have been fine with that. But at the end of the day, I think he's going to be primed for, for a good run of games here. What I'm really hoping for is to get these Burnley, Wolves, Luton, you know, games in particular before starting to look at what we do with Gabriel. But again, he's should be locked. He's played enough minutes. We spoke about it last week. Yudoji and Archer not doing much for us. Same with Turner. So this is what the team's going to look like. Going into this week without any moves so far, Ariola gets Brentford away, as does Bowen. Then Cash and Diaby get Forrest away as well, which is good. Forrest at home are a better team than they are away from home. I think this fixture is really good for Diaby more so than Cash because it looks like a one year could be back some point, uh, sometime soon. Simicas gets Luton away, which is fantastic. And then we're sort of playing Trippier or Gabriel. I don't particularly want to play Yudoji in this one as well. He's not 100%. So I'm leaning trip here for the attacking returns against Arsenal. And it is at, uh, sorry, against Arsenal at St. James Park. And Gordon gets us that as well. Then we get Salah, you know, Bowen, Sun again. Sun at home against Chelsea. Great fixture. Although Chelsea's defense has been, you know, better than what we expected. I still think Tottenham are going to get goals in this game. Salah and Darwin against Luton is going to be unbelievable, I think. Away, we know Luton, you know, they, they tested Tottenham, but Tottenham did waste some early chances, you know, against Luton at Luton. So, you know, if Liverpool can take some chances early in the game, this could be a big one. But the captaincy for me sits on Erling Haaland. He's at 84.5% owned. People have gotten rid of him around us as well. There's a lot of people above us that don't have Haaland, which is why they're above us too. I think, you know, with a full week's rest, they're out of the Carabao Cup. Erling Haaland, this could be hat-trick territory for 
Erling Haaland. So very happy to keep the captaincy on him. I'm really looking to roll my transfer. You can see I'm in a really good position with my overall rank as well. We're sitting in that 155, just inside the top 155,000 there. We're almost at 156,000, but very, very solid for me. What I want to look at is what the team's going to look like moving forward. So obviously in game week 12, we get two transfers here. We don't have much in the bank. We've got 0.1 in the bank. So if we wanted to make any moves in game week 12, then we have to start looking at freeing up some funds next week, which means pretty much like Trippier, which would be really hard for me to sell Trippier ahead of Bournemouth away, but then he gets Chelsea, Man United, you know, Everton, Spurs, Fulham, or the other enablers, probably Jared Bowen, who again is going to get Brentford, then Forrest and Burnley, Palace. It's hard. It's really hard. I do want some Arsenal attack, I think. But again, we want to see what they're um, going to deliver first. But what I've got for you guys is some options if you are really struggling. The first one is if you're looking for that enabler midfielder. This might not be a this week move. Well, if it, no, sorry, it is a this week move. You're getting that Sheffield United fixture. You could potentially look at Huang Yicham. My only concern with uh, Huang is that we don't know what Wolves is going to look like without Pedro Neto. So he's got that 3% ownership. He has scored six goals, and he's very much a goal threat. I like him a lot. He comes in as a midfielder as well. So he gets the clean sheet. He gets the five for a goal instead of four. And I'm really in for him at the moment. Someone else that a lot of people have sold at is that midfielder who could be another good enabler is Brian and Bumo. His XGI is like borderline the highest with like Haaland. He's just stupid numbers at the moment. He's on penalties. He's a 90-minute man. Eight returns already through 10 games. is just unbelievable for Brian and Bumo. Doing it as the main man for Brentford. Definitely looking at getting him back in here in game week 14 for Luton, Brighton, Sheffield, Aston Villa. I think that's a great run of fixtures for Brighton and Bumo. And he's shown over the last couple of weeks that he can get returns as well. I can't see it on this screen, but we know he's returned against Burnley and Chelsea as well. So he's very, uh, he's very, well, not fixture proof, but you'd be fine playing him if you had to. So they're two players that I'm really looking at as well. And then the, if you're looking for a defender to get in, it's going to be Mark Guayhi. If I can spell his name. Oh, because I'm searching midfielders. That might help if I change it to defenders. Crystal Palace defense have kept four clean sheets this season. I don't know if I'd prioritize bringing a defender in this week. Clean sheets have been really hard to come by, but Burnley, Everton, Luton, West End, Bournemouth is a fantastic stretch of fixtures if you are looking for someone for the here and now. And up front for me, I think if you're ne needing to bring someone in and you've got money, let me put forwards on. I'm going to do some more videos about these guys a little bit later. I think Callum Wilson, whilst Isaac's injured, regardless of this Arsenal game, you get Bournemouth, Chelsea, Man United, Everton, Spurs, Fulham. There are going to be goals in these games. And if Callum Wilson is locked in up front, he played about 25 minutes this morning as well. I really like Callum Wilson long-term, you know, as well, as long as Isaac's out. Or my other one, who was my favorite earlier in the season before he got himself injured, was Odson Edward. The main man for Crystal Palace has missed a few games, has still scored four goals, and has those, you know, Burnley, Everton, Luton, West Ham, Bournemouth, fixtures here. You could definitely start him in all of those. So that's where I'm looking at for our team at the moment. Let me know if I should do anything else other than just rolling the transfer. I think I'm pretty set on rolling the transfer, but that's where I'm at. Let me know your moves in the comments and I'll see you guys very, very shortly for our Game Week 11 review.